Hi, this is Greg with ASUS ROG, and in this video, we're gonna be building an incredible workstation PC that we're actually gonna use here in the studio. It's gonna be used for video editing, motion graphics, and even to help run our weekly Twitch streams that we do every Friday. So if you haven't seen those yet, be sure to check them out. Now, the first thing we'll do is go through each one of the components we're using in this build. I'll tell you a little bit about it and why we chose it. At the heart of the system is the ROG Zenith Extreme Alpha motherboard. This board supports up to 128 gigabytes of DDR4 memory as well as up to three M.2 SSDs. There are also four PCIe 3.0 x16 slots to accommodate our GPU and other expansion cards, as well as a ton of USB ports on the rear to support our webcams, audio boards, and other accessories that we use for streaming. The CPU that we're using is the AMD Ryzen Threadripper 2 2950X. With 16 cores and 32 threads, it should be able to chew through our video editing and encoding needs with ease. Keeping the CPU cool is the ROG Rio all-in-one liquid CPU cooler with a 240mm radiator. Now when you're working with Adobe Creative Cloud, the more CUDA cores you have, the better. So I want to thank NVIDIA for sending over this incredible Titan RTX GPU. It features NVIDIA Turing architecture with 24GB of GDDR6 and 4,608 CUDA cores. This card is more than enough for our current Adobe Premiere and After Effects workflows and will allow us to easily start implementing more 3D elements into our videos. The memory we're using is a 64 gigabyte kit of HyperX Predator DDR4 RGB at 3000 megahertz. Not only does this memory perform great, but it also features Aura Sync compatible RGB LED lighting, so it's gonna look great as well. For storage, Seagate went above and beyond in hooking us up with three of their Fire CUDA 510 PCIe Gen 3 X4 NVMe 1.3 M.2 SSDs. I know that's a mouthful, but that basically means that these are some of the fastest M.2 SSDs available today. And we've got three of them at one terabyte each. Also, another side note is our motherboard will allow us to put them in RAID 0 for some incredible speeds. That's going to be fun. For additional storage, they also sent us an Iron Wolf 110 3.84TB 2.5 inch SATA SSD. This will be our main storage drive, whereas the M.2 drives will be our C drive and scratch disks. Powering the system is a 1200 watt ROG Thor 80 Plus Platinum PSU with integrated Live Dash display and Aura Sync RGB LED lighting. All of these components are going to be fit into the ROG Strix Helios mid tower case. This case has a lot of really innovative features like integrated GPU supports and removable radiator and fan supports that make installation a breeze. We'll get into more of these details during the build, so why don't we go ahead and get started. All we'll need is our trusty screwdriver. Whoa, almost stabbed myself in the brain. The only tool we'll need is our trusty Phillips head screwdriver, but also helps to have a smaller Phillips head screwdriver for the M.2 installation. Now the first thing we're gonna do is prep the motherboard. That means that we're going to install the CPU right here and the M.2 drives. It's a lot easier to install these components with the motherboard here on the table than it would be if it was inside the case. Now the CPU comes with this screwdriver uh, that we're going to use to open up the CPU mounting bracket. Now there's three screws, one, two, and three that are numbered. And on here it tells you which ones to open first in what order. So to open, you do three, two, one. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now we need to take out this little placeholder here. So we just kind of push down and this comes up. Poop. So I'll go ahead and open up the CPU out of its little case here. You see it comes with this little bracket on there. This just slides right into this bracket, like the piece that we took out. Then we'll just close this top piece here and follow the instructions on which screws to do first, second, and third. So we go one. So next we'll go ahead and install one of our M.2 drives. This will go right underneath this panel here. We just need to remove these four screws. And this panel will actually work as a heat sink for the drive, keep it nice and cool when it's under heavy operation. All right, so we'll remove this little piece here to reveal the M.2 slot. So we're gonna grab our M.2 drive, and uh, this is pretty straightforward. Just line up the notches on the drive here. Insert it at about a 45 degree angle, and then we'll push it down. 
Now, normally you would just put in a screw here to lock down the M.2, but that screw actually corresponds with uh, this hole in the little heat spreader here. Um, so we're gonna use that to lock it down. Now on the rear of this, there's actually a piece of thermal tape here that will help transfer the heat from the M.2 into this piece of aluminum to help keep everything nice and cool. So let's go ahead and do this. Okay. So the next two M.2 drives are going to be installed into this DIM.2 adapter. So we'll put one M.2 on either side, and then this gets mounted onto the motherboard almost like, almost like a DIM slot. That's why it's called DIM.2. Now the motherboard comes with two of these little nuts and screws. We'll go ahead and open these up and these will be used for mounting the M.2s. All right, so these adapters will accommodate M.2s of different sizes. Uh, these are the 2280 size. So we'll go ahead and put the, uh, put the nut in first. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. And then it has this tiny little screw here that will help lock down the SSD. So we'll go ahead and pop that in there. Goes down there. So one side is in. Go ahead and do the other side. She got it in. The SSD. There we go. All right, next we'll put these covers back on. Now underneath there's thermal tape here. Now these pieces are made out of aluminum, so this, this thermal tape, let's see if I can get this off. There we go. All right, so this thermal tape will help transfer the heat from the M.2 to this aluminum piece to help it act as a heat sink, keep everything nice and cool. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. There we go. Now we've got two terabytes of super fast M.2 in this little DIM.2. We'll go ahead and pop it into the motherboard here. So this attaches to the motherboard right here in the DIM.2 slot, almost like you would install a stick of memory. The next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and prep the case. Now, the case we're using is the ROG Strix Helios, as I mentioned before, and I actually really like it. Um, so how we prep the case is we're basically gonna remove all of the panels, front and back. We're gonna remove the um, PSU cover here and just basically get it ready for to accept all of the components. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, now we should be able to take these out. All right, we won't be using any three and a half inch hard drive, so let's go ahead and remove this hard drive cage. All right, next we'll go ahead and install the power supply. This goes in right like that. Okay, next we'll go ahead and install the motherboard. Now this has a rear I.O. shield built in, so we don't need to put that in first. So you just need to kind of slide it in and you're good to go. And now we'll use the screws that uh, are included in the case to go ahead and screw this thing down. Now that we've got the motherboard installed, the next step is to install the ROG Ryu 240 liquid CPU cooler. We're gonna mount the radiator up to the top here, but first let's go ahead and mount the fans to the radiator. So next we'll mount the radiator to this panel. This panel is actually removable, so if you have a more complicated liquid cooling setup, 
you can, it makes it really easy to install. But for this, it's pretty straightforward. So we'll just go ahead and get it lined up and pop in a few screws. Next, we'll go ahead and install the pump and the cooling block onto the CPU. In order to do that, you need to use the bracket that comes with the Threadripper 2 because it's such a unique size. All right. Now, the Reuo usually comes with thermal paste pre-applied, but we're reusing this from a previous build, so I'm gonna go ahead and apply some thermal paste on here right now. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do this, and just look online, search thermal paste, and you'll find every way to do it under the sun. I like to just put a couple of small little lines about the size of grains of rice on there. There we go. Now, you can use a credit card or any sort of flat object to help spread it around, but this thermal paste actually came with a little spread knife, so you can use this to help spread it around. And you just wanna get it nice and thin, and spread it around before you kind of cinch it down onto the CPU. So now you can see we've got a nice even coat that's almost all the way to the edges. You can go ahead and mount it on the CPU. This bracket has thumb screws that make it really easy to attach. Once you get it lined up, just kind of start the screws with your fingers. So go ahead, you want to tighten them down diagonally first. And get them so they're finger tight. And then once they're pretty finger tight, We'll give them one turn with the screwdriver. That's good. Just shake it, it's in there. Okay, so we're about halfway done with the build. The next step is to install our memory. All right, since we're only doing four memory sticks and we have eight slots, gotta make sure we check the manual to make sure we have the memory in the right order. All right, now that we've got the memory in there, I'm actually gonna remove one of the modules because I forgot to plug in the USB cable into the CPU cooler. And it's much easier to plug in if you remove one of the modules. Um, also, we wanna run this cable down to one of the headers on the bottom of the motherboard before we install the GPU, just because there's more room to kind of fish this around and snake it through to the bottom. All right, next, <laughs> we're gonna <coughs> pop this bad boy in. No one told me it was gonna be so heavy. Whoa. All right, next thing we'll install is the Elgato 4K60 Pro capture card. Now this gives us an HDMI input and an output so we can capture our gameplay. All right, so we're almost there. That's yeah, really starting to look complete. But there's one more thing we want to install, and that is the Seagate Iron Wolf 3.84 terabyte, two and a half inch SSD. This thing is crazy. So on the rear of the case, we can install up to four two and a half inch SSDs, but with 3.84 terabytes, we're only gonna need one. So let's go ahead and install it right here. First, remove this little mounting bracket. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and add the SATA cable. The motherboard actually comes with these really nice braided SATA cables uh, that we can use for this build. All right, so we've got all of our components installed in the case, and now it's time to wire everything up. So we've got to install the power supply cables. We also have cables from the front IO that we need to connect to the motherboard. And this case also has an integrated fan controller and RGB LED lighting. So we've got to make sure that that stuff is all connected so everything works together. And then this little guy that comes with the power supply is for the RGB lighting on these logos here. So we'll go ahead and plug that in. And then we'll run this to an addressable header on the motherboard.
All right, next we're gonna cover up all this mess with the power supply cover. All right. Okay, next we'll go ahead and plug in the graphics card and we'll run these PCIe cables up through this rubber grommet in the power supply cover. All right, I actually have two more of these cable combs that come with the Thor PSU. They're actually made by Cable Mod. I'm gonna go ahead and pop these in here to make sure everything stays nice and tidy. And there's two. All right, it's looking good. All right, then we'll add the other half to the PSU shroud here. Boom, say goodbye to messy cables. So as you can see, the cable ties do a great job of keeping everything in line, but it also comes with this internal cable cover. If we put this on, let's see here. Now this is underneath the glass. We put this on and it kind of just locks everything down. There we go. All right, and we're done. Last thing we need to do is turn it on, see if it works. All right, looks like we're good to go. I wanna thank you guys very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up, a like, or a follow. Oh wait, there's actually one more thing we gotta do. Ooh, that did not work out. All right. Well, thanks for watching. All right, now it's really ready to go. I can't wait to get this thing into our post-production workflow and to start using it to encode our weekly streams. It's gonna be awesome. So I wanna give a big thank you to all our partners that sent us hardware to make this thing possible. So that's HyperX with the memory, Seagate with the storage, AMD with the Threadripper 2, and of course, NVIDIA with the incredible Titan RTX. That's just insane. So I wanna thank you guys at home very much for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more content from ASUS and ROG. We'll see you next time.